While most of Hollywood history is written with scripts, there's something special about going off book. And we're not just talking single lines. It's gotta be a back and forth, give and take, entire scenes. These are the top 10 improvised scenes of all time. When you think of improv, there's hardly a name that comes to mind before Judd Apatow's. Judd's been behind some of the decade's best ad-libbing, from the 40-year-old virgin, to knocked up, to super bad, and it's mostly because he treats his actors like true equals in the creative process. As a result, he's helped launch the careers of some of the funniest guys in Hollywood. But for our list, we didn't pick any of them. Instead, our number 10 goes to the women in Bridesmaids. No carry-on, huh? No. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed she didn't put anything in the overhead bin, either. And I get it. I get it. I want you to know, uh, protect and serve, air marshal style. The 2011 breakout was hysterical from start to finish, partly because of a killer script, but mostly because they usually tossed it out the window, coming up with enough material for a 20-hour version of the movie that supposedly exists somewhere. And while the whole cast deserves a spot on this list, we've got to give it up to the air marshal scene between Ground Leads veteran Melissa McCarthy and her husband, Ben Falcone. You're an errand boy. Sent by grocery clerks to collect the bill. Next up at number nine, Apocalypse Now. If you haven't heard the stories, you should definitely check out Hearts of Darkness, the making of documentary. But it was basically a year of heart attacks, seizures, typhoons, monsoons, actual war, and human corpses that drove the entire cast and crew to the breaking point. It also led to a cinematic masterpiece and some of the best improvised scenes to boot. And these weren't necessarily improv of invention so much as of last resort. Martin Sheen's opening scene was completely improvised and had him actually slicing his hand up because of his not-so-pretend intoxication. But we've got to hand it to Marlon Brando's Colonel Kurtz for our number nine slot. Of course, Brando's no stranger to improv. His famous monologue from On the Waterfront wasn't scripted either. I could have been a contender. But for Apocalypse Now, Brando showed up on set without having so much as read the script. He shut down the production for a week while Coppola tried to get him to learn his lines by reading them to him out loud. And when that didn't work, Brando said he'd just wing it, so he babbled for 18 minutes worth of madness before declaring to Coppola that he couldn't think of anything else to say, and if he wanted more, he could hire another actor. Is it better to be feared or respected? And I say, is it too much to ask for both? Next up at number eight, we're looking at pretty much the entirety of Iron Man. That's right, Robert Downey Jr.'s motor mouth Tony Stark was pretty much completely off the cuff. When studio executives greenlit the first entry into the modern Marvel franchise, they got a little too caught up in the special effects to worry about the script. By the time shooting rolled around, all they really had was an outline. So RDJ and director Jon Favreau sorta of just winged it. And when Jeff Bridges had trouble wrapping his head around the chaos of it all, he says he just thought of it as a $200 million student film and rolled with the punches. That's some student film. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. At number seven, The Jazz Singer. Back in 1927, when Warner Brothers set out to revolutionize the movie business with sound, they figured it would be perfect for musical numbers. They intended for people to sing, not talk. But when Al Jolson finished his first musical number, he did something that changed Hollywood forever. He started speaking. That's right, the whole concept of dialogue came from an ad lib. As you can imagine, audiences ate it up, and the rest, as they say, is history. Next up at number six, none other than Bill Murray. Mr. Murray seems to be more myth than man lately, and for good reason. He's one of the most effortlessly funny human beings on the planet. After training at Second City Improv, Bill went from National Lampoon to Saturday Night Live to his breakout role in Meatballs, and he's been crafting scenes on the fly ever since. Whether he was ad-libbing every line in Ghostbusters, I feel so funky. Stealing the show in Tootsie, I wish I had a theater that was only open when it rained, or whispering something we'll never know into Scarlett Johansson's ear in Lost in Translation, Bill improvised most of the classic comedy moments from our childhood. But for our pick, it's got to be his Cinderella story from Caddyshack. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere to lead the pack. Ed Augusta, he's on his final hole. He's about 455 yards away. He's going to hit about a two iron, I think. Cinderella story out of nowhere. A former greenskeeper now about to become the Masters champion. It looks like I'm a wreck. It's in the hole! The scene was scripted with only two lines of stage direction and meant as a simple transition shot. But the director, Bill's Second City co-star Harold Ramis, had a different idea and told Bill Murray to go wild, which is exactly what he did. 
Now, if you give Bill Murray and Harold Ramis two lines of stage direction, you end up with a scene like that. But if you give it to Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese, you're bound to wind up with something completely different. And that's exactly how we ended up with the famous mirror sequence from Taxi Driver. You talking to me? You talking to me? But for our number five, we're going with a different Scorsese improv scene. Yes, we're talking about the funny how scene between Joe Pesci and Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh, what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know. You're, you're, it's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? When Pesci told Scorsese a story about calling a mobster funny back when he was younger, Scorsese told him to recreate the incident on screen with Ray. The only catch was that he didn't tell anybody else. The resulting scene perfectly captures the manic nature of Pesci's character and the danger of the world they lived in, all without a single page of script. At number four, The Breakfast Club. John Hughes shot this high school classic entirely in sequence, and when he arrived at the dramatic climax where they all sit in a circle and explain how they ended up there, Hughes tossed out the script and told them to improvise it, letting the actors rely on the instincts they'd built up over the course of the shoot. And the result is one of the most touching scenes of the film, and we don't want to give too much away, so we'll just let them do the talking. What's bizarre? I mean, we're all pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it, that's all. Oh, you bizarre. He can't think for himself. Now, if there's one genre that's just a goldmine for improv, it's mockumentary. Borat saw Sasha Baron Cohen unleash his wild Kazakhstani antics on an unsuspecting public, and Christopher Guest has directed a long string of mockumentaries from Waiting for Guffman to Best in Show. But our number three goes back to where it all began with This is Spinal Tap. It's stupid such a cover. fine line between stupid and, and clever. Completely unscripted and based on a party gag, Rob Reiner shot Spinal Tap exactly as if it were a documentary, taking nine whole months to essentially write the movie in the edit bay. But if we had to pick a single scene from Spinal Tap, even though there are so many, it's always got to be the one with the amp that goes to 11. This is a top to uh, you know what we use on stage, but it's very, very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Kubrick's widely known as one of the most meticulous and controlling directors to ever walk a set, hardly letting anyone change so much as a single line. But if you look at his body of work, he's got a surprising amount of improv throughout. From Peter Sellers and Dr. Strangelove, Monsieur has been rocked! To R. Lee Ermey's non-stop abuse in Full Metal Jacket, I bet you're the kind of guy that would fuck a person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. And even Nicholson's classic line from The Shining, Here's Johnny! But our number two goes to the home invasion from A Clockwork Orange. Kubrick had spent four days working on the scene and still felt that something wasn't working. Frustrated, he asked Malcolm McDowell if he could try something else, perhaps a dance, in the next take. So McDowell decided to include a song with his dance, and he belted out the only one he could remember at the time, which just so happened to be Singing in the Rain. The result is one of the eeriest juxtapositions caught on film, and it just so happened to be completely unplanned. And finally, at number one, pretty much the entire body of work of the master of improv himself, Robin Williams. We're sad to let him go, but grateful for the laughs he left behind. Here's to Robin. Good morning, Vietnam! 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck! Hello! She used to fart in the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> One night was so loud it woke the dog up. What's the weather like out there? It's hot. Damn hot. Real hot. Hot as this is my shorts. I can poop things in it. Well, can you tell me what it feels like? Fool, what is hot? I told you again. When you're born on the sun. Bitch. Stole my life. So what do you think? Did we leave out one of your favorite improv scenes? Did you find one of our picks to be wildly overrated? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to Cinefix for more IndieWire movie lists.